living on or adjacent to water is greatly valued by property owners. We view ponds and lakes as desirable assets that can increase our property values. Many residential subdivisions contain smaller ponds or water features. If these ponds are not properly maintained, they can become a liability. This video will examine what those ponds are and how essential pond maintenance is to the overall health and function of the pond. Stormwater ponds are man-made bodies of water in commercial and residential developments that collect, store, and slowly release stormwater runoff to help prevent downstream flooding. Every time it rains enough to cause stormwater to flow or puddle, the water is going into the pond to help drain the water away from your home or yard. The pond then stores that drainage and slowly releases it, ideally before the next storm, so that the nearby waterway where the stormwater eventually flows to is not overwhelmed with too much drainage at one time, which could cause flooding. In addition to controlling water quantity or drainage to prevent local and downstream flooding, these ponds improve water quality. Stormwater ponds reduce pollution by allowing particles to settle to the bottom and through uptake by plants and aquatic organisms. A wide variety of pollutants such as sediments, excess nitrogen and phosphorus, wildlife and animal waste, and chemicals are carried with the stormwater into the pond. Some stormwater pollutants can be harmful to human and animal health, so stormwater ponds are not designed for recreational activities such as swimming, wading, boating, or fishing. Waterborne sediment, such as dirt particles, can shorten the life of a pond dramatically. The sediment particles carry pollutants and are deposited at the bottom of the pond. Over time, the sediments build up, filling up the pond and causing problems such as reducing the pond depth so the pond is no longer able to hold as much stormwater drainage, allowing plants and algae to grow in shallower, warmer water, and as these plants die in the colder weather, they sink to the bottom of the pond, also causing it to fill in faster decreasing pond water oxygen levels that are essential to fish and other aquatic life. If the pond shoreline and banks are not stabilized, they can also be a source of sediment particles that can contaminate the pond. As a pond fills up with unchecked sediment, it will transition from pond to shallow wetland. When inspecting the pond, there are several things to look for. The inflow structures, the storm inlets and pipes that feed the pond, should be checked for debris buildup, sediment, and vegetation. These structures need to be cleared to allow the stormwater to flow freely to the pond. The most critical component of a stormwater pond is the outlet control structure that regulates the water level and maintains the permanent pool. The outlet control structure is usually a concrete structure or pipe. This structure also needs to be cleared periodically. Also, check to see if these structures show signs of wear such as cracks, corrosion, or broken pipes. Often, the stormwater infrastructure serving the pond is publicly owned, so homeowner associations should check with local authorities before performing any repairs or maintenance on pipes or other structures. Sediment materials must be removed periodically and properly disposed of off-site in a landfill. Check for signs of sediment accumulation in the pond and decreased pond volume. Uh, the two most readily noted evidence of, of sedimentation in the pond would be murkiness of water and also a decrease in depth and increase in nutrient levels which can lead to increased algae production and planktonic algae. Do the shoreline show signs of erosion such as undercutting, scouring, or slumping? If so, these areas should be stabilized by using practices such as planting appropriate plants or using matting. The pond should have a vegetated buffer at least 3 to 5 feet wide with plants that are 6 inches or taller. Ponds should not be mowed to the edge, which attracts nuisance wildlife such as excessive numbers of geese. Homeowner associations should check to make sure this minimal mowing height is included with mowing vendor contracts and is compliant with local codes. Shoreline surface and underwater vegetation should contain a variety of species and be dominated by one type. Check for excessive amounts of algae. Less than 20% surface coverage is ideal. If algae exceeds these amounts, then you will need to add additional practices such as homeowner education, aeration, and so on. Are there signs of nuisance wildlife? Look for geese droppings, beaver dams, muskrat burrows, and nests. While the pond is a naturalized setting that will attract various species of wildlife, nuisance wildlife can damage and destroy your pond and should be removed or discouraged. There are several options that should be considered for ongoing maintenance of stormwater ponds. 
First, the homeowner association should check with local authorities for the pond design requirements and maintenance guidelines. Then an overall specific maintenance plan should be developed and followed for the entire drainage area of the pond. The plan should address the following. Routine and non-routine maintenance items. Common maintenance plans vary depending on pond. For most of what I do, it involves vegetation control, taking care of invasive species, fish management, dam inspection, the inflow and outflow structures. Aeration systems and fountains. Aeration systems and fountains are typically meant to increase the amount of dissolved oxygen in a pond. The more dissolved oxygen you have in a pond, the more area that your fish can utilize. But on top of that, also it increases the bacterial decay of organic matter, so that can lead to less buildup of organic matter on the bottom of a lake or a pond. Chemicals such as shoreline and aquatic herbicides, algicides, dyes, and so on. The chemicals that can be put into a pond need to be approved by EPA for aquatic use. Any chemical that does not have aquatic use on its label should not be used in a lake or a pond. When to use professional services. The common services that can be contracted out for lake and pond management are vegetation management, of course, fisheries management, dam inspections should be done periodically, and the inflow and outflow services should be done periodically to make sure that nothing's getting clogged up. Paying for the ongoing maintenance and upkeep of the stormwater pond falls to the homeowners in that area that feed to the pond. Usually a homeowners or property owners association collects dues from the residents to pay for this. Help educate others in your neighborhood about the storm pond and its functions. Signage and community awareness are good tools for sharing the information. Homeowners can reduce the amount of pollutants going to the storm ponds by following the tips provided in the Blue is the New Green video, which is also a free video that has been posted on YouTube by the same partners who made this video. Pets or other animals should not be released into storm ponds and items should not be dumped there. In conclusion, by following the recommendations in this video, your community can have a functioning, attractive stormwater pond that is a real asset to your neighborhood.